Hey guys, welcome to The Deep Breathe. It's Ezra. Today, I want to talk to you guys about mania and what it means to have a manic episode um, and my experiences with mania. Now, today, the word manic or mania has way more of a... Uh, people know about it more. People talk about it more. It's more known about. It's more discussed. But the flips, on the flip side of that, mania has kind of lost a little bit of its true definition or true meaning in the medical sense. Um, I have the definition of mania from the DSM, which is what um, psychiatrists and psychologists use when they diagnose. Now, mania has a number of different things, but basically it's inflated self-esteem or grandiosity, decreased need for sleep, more talkative than usual or pressure to keep talking, flights of ideas, distractibility, excessive involvement in pleasurable activities that have a high potential for painful consequences. Long story short, mania is dangerous. It involves hospitalization. It's kind of a scary thing for everyone involved. Now, I've seen a little bit on TikTok and Instagram how people say, you know, staying up all night drinking iced coffees and shopping on Amazon is a manic episode, um, which it, it, it definitely could feel like a heightened sense of, of activity or, or, or you're more hyper, but that's not technically a manic episode. Manic episodes and mania mean you have bipolar one and that you need to be hospitalized for that manic episode and medicated in order for it to go away. Um, now, I was first diagnosed when I was 18 years old and with my personal experience, I had um, a gay, ex a, I had hooked up with a gay guy for the first time, another man for the first time, and I had a gay experience, and I was reading this book, and a lot of things came together. I didn't sleep for a couple of days, and it kind of snowballed into this, into this um, manic episode I later found out. I went to school, I didn't stop talking, I, everyone around me was just very confused as to what was going on with my behavior. It was like, you know, Ezra's acting weird today. He's making fun of teachers. What's going on with him? And in 2008, it wasn't as much of a known thing. I mean, people were really scared. And, and honestly, it was almost like I was going crazy and there was not a lot of explanation for it. Um, but uh, I soon learned after finding the right psychiatrist that I was manic, completely manic. Um, so my first episode was when I was 18 in 2008. Since then, I've had about six different episodes over the course of the last... 14 years. Um, now, just in the last 10 years, I've only had one episode. And as I've gotten older, I've been able to uh, stabilize a lot more. I'm on a lot of medication. Well, I'm on one medication for, for bipolar. It's uh, injectable um, psychotropic medication called Invega. It works really well. Um, and it's kind of, I'm kind of in a point now in my life where I can pull from my experiences of mania and how that's kind of opened the door creatively for me um, and, and show me kind of like how I can pull from all these different things in my mind in a stable, healthy way. I think what I really wanted to talk about today was what mania feels like and how it can be not necessarily such a bad thing. It can be kind of a tool, kind of a stepping stone, kind of a new perspective on life. Um, if you're watching this, maybe you you were diagnosed with bipolar or you've had some thoughts of of wanting to seek help for either mania or depression. Um, mania, what is mania? It is, if depression is a low kind of low mood, sadness and, and being distraught and, and, and being, you know, maybe having suicidal thoughts, mania is the exact opposite of that. So if you're down here with, with depression, mania is all the way up top. And for me, what it felt like when I first experienced it was like being on every single drug ever created and being so beautifully happy and uplifted and and um just so elevated elevated is a really good word for it because it's not it's not you're not happy you're not hyper it's like everything is times a hundred um and you just talk non-stop you're for me everything was symbolic i could not look at something and not find a symbol symbolic meaning in that for example if i saw someone walking down the street and they had the numbers 54 on their shirt that's my lucky number that would mean something to me even if it was a random sequence of numbers my brain would still find some sort of symbolic meaning in that when it doesn't necessarily exist other things that you know when i when i hear birds chirping 
near my house, I would think that they were talking to me or there was some sort of symbolic codified message in, in those chirps, which is not something a stable person would think. Their brain wouldn't go to that point. Um, other things are music, songs are written for you. Every song you hear on the radio means something to you and is speaking directly to you. That, that artist wrote a song for you. That's a manic thought for me. Uh, what, is, what else? Uh, even TV shows. Every, every sort of media I consumed was, it was like a spotlight effect. It was like all about me and in my journey of, I kind of like, I had a lot of creativity when I'm manic and I took, I took a lot of inspiration from what was around me, but it was to an unhealthy degree. I think you, you'll hear the term hypomanic, and that's kind of that that level before you reach and shoot off into into a full blown manic episode. And once you're hypomanic, you you are very inspired by things, but you're not in that full manic state. And I think a big part of artists, uh, a lot of artists do struggle with bipolar and, and mania, uh, even throughout the history of time. A lot of huge creators struggled with manic episodes, and especially with my own creative journey so much beauty and inspiration and, and, and um, you just see so many incredible things around you all day long and you wanna have a voice, you wanna share what you're going through to the world on a larger scale. That, that things with grandiosity come into play there where you feel like you are famous or that you're an angel or God sent or God himself or herself or themselves, and you have this ability to to uh, change the world, which is possible, but you really have to be stable in order to do that. Uh, I think, I think mania has really showed me what the brain is capable of doing in terms of emotion and mood. Your brain, if you have bipolar one or if you have a manic episode, is firing. It's 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 like a it's like a firework nonstop in your head. It's it's uh it's a lot it's a beautiful thing but it's very dangerous and when i say dangerous i've i've had to be hospitalized multiple times for each manic episode because i was a danger to to myself mainly i wasn't eating enough i was talking so fast i would i would have done something very dangerous i could have gotten walked out into traffic or or um, you know, dance naked down a crowded street. I just, you lose your sense of reality. You lose your sense of right and wrong, of shame. You know, you would feel fine walking into some person's backyard and sun tanning, you know, in their pool, like by their pool, without any sort of reality sense. You know, what's what's right and wrong there. Uh, my hospital experiences were life-changing and necessary and it is a little challenging a lot of times because a lot it's 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 the the beauty of the psych ward is that some people are there for depression schizophrenia mania suicide suicidality it's it's a whole broad spectrum and usually the manic people in there are are outnumbered by depression people with depressions what i mean by that is that maybe three four people will have mania and the rest won't but you still have to navigate how to how to interact in that in that realm. Um, with, when I'm in the hospital, I it takes me a few days to kind of settle in with that mania. I like to kind of meet people and, and, and I talk to people while I'm in there. And I, I have my family visit me a lot and I am medicated heavily because you need to be, um, you know, with Depakote and Zyprexa especially. Zyprexa is a really great medication to kind of knock the mania down. Um, but every time I leave the hospital, uh, it it really it was a necessary thing to happen and it, 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 it it's brought me here today without those hospital stays I'm really I really don't know what what happened so if you're watching this and you have been hospitalized or or you know you might think that that could happen understand that that is a necessary and helpful thing for most people I mean there are stories of abuse going you know things like that but I think on the whole, you know, a hospitalization is, is key for reducing manic symptoms and, 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 you know, ending the manic episode. 
Um, with with mania and creativity, on that note, I do think that that uh, the brain, when when it's tapped into a manic episode, is so inspired and so artistic that it's almost harmful for yourself because you might be invested in a project and um, you know not sleep, not eat, not take care of yourself for days. It's almost like the art becomes a drug in a sense, like you're fueling yourself on this creativity. And it's so dangerous because you just don't know. It's like you're you're like going 150 miles uphill and you're just gonna come crashing down. There's there's no other way around it. So whether that be you, you know, do something really harmful drug wise or, or some sort of um, incredibly dumb thing that you're going to do there's going to be a, you're going to fall down at some point and to be cushioned in the hospital or cushioned by your family members or relatives is really the best way to go um, so in general i do think that my bipolar has been a beautiful thing in my life um, thankfully i have the resources to get medication and, and to 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 stay stable now and i think the manic episodes have really opened my eyes to a lot of things that most people will never experience. Uh, most people that do ayahuasca or DMT or all these other crazies, you know, um, psychedelics, like, yes, they're seeing certain things, but my brain gets there on its own. And people with manic episodes and bipolar one, your brain gets there on its own. And it's, it's dangerous to let it get there and not be, you know, take the right choices to, to remain stable. But in a way, it's beautiful that we can experience those things. I have no regrets. I think that um, everything's kind of come to come and led me into a path of success and creativity, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but I think medication is crucial. I think staying away from alcohol and, and drugs and other, you know, temptations like that is crucial. I think once you're able to be at a place of, of, of not necessarily sobriety, but when you're at a very, you know, level, even course, and you are able to maintain stability, you'll be able to pick moments from your manic episodes or what you've seen with your bipolar disorder that um, can add a little creativity and spark to your life. I think that, um, the beauty of the mind and the, and the human life and humanity is our ability to create and to share beauty with others and ourselves. And I think people with mental health disorders or people with bipolar, I don't even think it's a disorder. I think it's, it's a disorder, but it's, it's just the way it is. You know, we, we, we label different things to, you know, we have all these labels and boxes we put people in. Um, but I think with mania specifically, your brain is overactive. You find beauty in too many things. You know, you have to be able to reach a level of stability to stay alive. But mania is a beautiful yet very challenging and very intense thing um, that I think people are learning more about, which is good. But to kind of get back to where I started, mania isn't staying up all night shopping on Amazon. Mania is extremely extremely intense and uh, multifaceted you know and it's and it requires hospitalization medication and support so i'll end this video uh kind of went on different tangents there just kind of spoke freely i have nothing really written down but i think that i uh hopefully have shared a little bit about what mania is to you uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I, uh, I will gladly answer them. And I thank you for watching. And I will see you soon. Bye, guys.